Hi, welcome back. I hope you enjoyed that worship song. Today we're continuing our series on the Kingdom of God. In our message today we're going to look at how the Kingdom of God is a present reality, but also how you enter the Kingdom of God as well. I think though at this point it's worth us having a brief recap on last week's message. We, we looked at last week how the kingdom of God was the central theme of Jesus' message. Matthew 4 verse 17 says, From that time on Jesus began to preach, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven has come near. The king, we saw how the kingdom of God is described in scripture in three ways. It's the rank, authority and sovereignty sovereignty exercised by a king. First of all, a kingdom is the authority to rule, the sovereignty of a king. That was George Ladd's description. Secondly, it is a present reality. Thirdly, it is a future realm. Upon the foundation that we set last week, we will look in more detail today at what the Bible says about the kingdom of God being present now. And how you can enter the kingdom of God, should you wish to. We live in a world where, by permission, Satan is at work. 2 Corinthians 4.4 4 says the following. The God of this age has blinded the minds of unbelievers, so that they cannot see the light of the gospel that displays the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. We can look around and see all kinds of wrong in the world. Greed, poverty, murder, hatred, persecution of all kinds. These bad things do not come from God, they come from Satan. His aim to destroy you, to keep you away from God. His way of life is horrible and ultimately leads to death and eternal separation from God which for those of you who aren't aware, is called hell. Satan has blinded many to God. We see that in the irreverence that the church is uh, looked upon with now by the vast majority of people, how we are looked to be sidelined, how we look to some, in some cases legislated against. Satan, on the other hand, encourages people to look to self, to pursue, to put themselves before others, to look out for number one, to pursue things at the cost of others. Jesus came to usher in, to inaugurate the kingdom of God. There is a fantastic verse in Colossians 1, and it's verse 13. And it says the following, For he has rescued us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of the Son he loves. I, I've read that verse probably numerous times. I've read Colossians numerous times in my journey as a Christian. But that, when I looked at that verse to this week, it, it spoke to me so deeply. The Greek word translated dominion, is the word that can also be translated power, control, authority, right. Jesus came to rescue us from the control of Satan, from the rule of Satan. Think of the darkness of this world that we've already mentioned. These are the things that Jesus came to rescue us from. That rescue involves a transition from darkness, of the, from the darkness of the world, to the light of the kingdom. Jesus, when he came, he inaugurated the kingdom of God. As we receive Jesus into our lives, and we'll look at that in greater detail in a bit, we are accepting the authority of God in our lives. His kingdom is coming 
in us. Remember that definition of about how how the kingdom is is initial is firstly the authority to rule. We are not transported to another place when the kingdom of God comes. In this instance, it's not a physical place like a country. It is in us. I would like to read some verses from John 17, verses 14 to 16, which uh, recall Jesus praying about his disciples. And it says, I have given them your word, and the world has hated them. For they are not of the world any more than I am of the world. My prayer is not that you take them out of the world, but that you protect them from the evil one. They are not of the world, even as I am not of it. You, we can see here that, that the disciples, Jesus wasn't praying for them to be removed from earth, removed from this place. But he was taking them out of it. And so you, you have to go somewhere when you are taken out of it. So they were being taken out of this dominion of darkness and, and taken into or receiving the kingdom of God. Jesus was praying rather than being taken out, they would actually be they would be protected as they did the work of kingdom kingdom advancement. You see, when we enter the kingdom of God, it is not a guarantee that we will have an easy life. I wonder whether the reason some people walk away from Christianity is because that's what they believe it should be. The too many preachers have said, come to know Jesus and your life will be perfect. That won't be the case. My life isn't perfect. I've been struggling for two, three weeks now with sciatica. And I've had prayers and tablets and all kinds of things. But it's a pain in the leg, literally. There will be challenges as we go on our Christian journey. But we should ask and continue to pray for God to protect us and help us. Satan will want to come against us. He wants to discourage us. Wants to dissuade us from talking to people about Jesus. Satan prowls the earth. Why does he want to stop us? Because we have that role to play in advancing the kingdom, one person at a time. There will come a time in the future, and we're going to look at what the future kingdom will look like in, in the coming weeks, but there will come a time when the kingdom of God is fully realised. But for now, we need to realise that we're in a time where the kingdom of God has not been consummated. George Ladd, again, I, I quote him, describes it as a mystery saying, fulfilment of the kingdom is here, but consummation, consummation of the kingdom is not. We see in part, in the future we will see fully. As we see the kingdom of God advancing, we should see things, we, there are things we should see, we, things we should experience to, for us to know that the kingdom of God is advancing. Romans 4 verse 17 says, For the kingdom of God is not a matter of eating and drinking, but of righteousness, peace and joy in the Spirit. The kingdom of God is about having the Holy Spirit in us, about peace and joy. It's about moving in the power of the Holy Spirit. As we uh, advance the kingdom, we will see the power of the Holy Spirit working. We will see miracles. We will see words of knowledge. We will see gifts of the Spirit growing in people as they advance the kingdom of God. But as we accept the King Jesus into our life, as we enter the kingdom of God, our lives should change. Things should happen. When we see, when we receive the Holy Spirit in our lives, when we receive that, 
when we are transformed, and we'll look at that again in a minute, transformed by the power of the Holy Spirit. So if, the, if Jesus came to inaugurate, to usher in the style of the kingdom of, the kingdom of God, how do we enter it? Many people, I think, believe that you automatically go to heaven. If you do enough good things, if you're a nice enough person, then that is where you go. I see many of my friends saying, oh, you know, my auntie's just died, and, but I know she'll be in heaven looking down on me. They'll be up there partying with a, this or that relative. Well, only if they've accepted Jesus as their Lord and Saviour. Now, I don't go and type that under the comment on Facebook, because that wouldn't be helpful. But we need to be educating people, sharing the good news of Jesus. Because the Bible tells us something different about how you enter the kingdom of God. John 3, verses 3, and then 5 and 6 say the following. Jesus, Jesus is talking to Nicodemus, who was um, one of the leaders in Israel, leaders of the Jew, and had asked, you know, how you, you know, about the kingdom of God and, and all of those things. And Jesus replied to him, very truly, I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God unless they are born again. Now, verse 4, which I haven't got here in front of me, Nicodemus goes, how can I be born again? And Jesus answered, very truly, I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God unless they are born of water and the Spirit. Flesh gives birth to flesh, but the Spirit gives birth to the Spirit. The words used here by Jesus are incredibly powerful and, 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 and full of meaning. You cannot enter the kingdom of God unless you are born of water and spirit. The words, very truly, which Jesus starts his answer with, are actually the same word in Hebrew. Amen, amen. Truly, truly could be a translation. The, the repetition of, of those words underlines the importance of what Jesus was saying, or what he was going to say as he answered Nicodemus. No one can enter the kingdom of God unless they are born of water and the Spirit. There is a rebirth. We are reborn. We need to be reborn if we want to enter the kingdom of God. And how is that possible? You know, how are we reborn? Well, it's, it is possible by accepting that we are sinners, that we have all done things that damage our relationship with God, and that we want to enter a right relationship with Him by accepting that Jesus died for us, paid the price for our sins on the cross, defeated death and rose again. Later on in John 3, verses 16 to 17, the first verse 16 is one of the most well-known Bible verses. It says the following, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. This is how we get reborn. Whoever believes in him shall not be perished. That is speaking of eternal life. That is how we are reborn. Once we put our faith in Jesus, we receive the Holy Spirit. The power of the Holy Spirit starts the process of transforming us. The aim for us to become more Christ-like. We enter the kingdom of God when we accept who Jesus is, is what he did for us. When we accept that we are sinners and that we need a saviour. We are rescued 
from the dominion of darkness. We should no longer be controlled by the ruler of this world, but rather God reigns in our lives. We are rescued from one place and taken to another place. It's not a physical thing, it's a spiritual thing. Once we are born again, people should start to see the fruit of the Spirit in our lives. Love, joy, peace, forbearance, which could you know, easily mean patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. This fruit is the opposite of what Satan would have the world look like. The Apostle Paul, again in his letter to the church in Colossae, tells them how the gospel, the good news, is bearing fruit and growing. Colossians 1 verses 5 to 6. The faith and love that spring from the hope stored up from, for you in heaven and about which you have already heard in the true message of the gospel that has come to you. In the same way the gospel is bearing fruit and growing throughout the whole world, just as it has been doing among you since the day you heard it and truly understand, understood sorry, God's grace. Bearing fruit. I want us just to dwell on that word for a moment. The gospel bears fruit. In our lives, should bear the fruit of love, joy, peace, patience, self-control, those things that we spoke about earlier, kindness. And that should filter out of us into this world that Satan is trying to ruin. Where Christians are present, where followers of Jesus are present, the world should be a better place. That is how we advance the kingdom of God. That's how we uh, take ground for the kingdom of God. Christians advance the kingdom of God by being different, by, by standing up against the things that Satan would have us do and have the world do. Christian businesses should pay their bills on time, should look after their employees, shouldn't look to, to pay them as cheaply as possible. The world should be being changed. The kingdom of God, the heaven should be invading earth. Remember when we talked about the Lord's Prayer last week. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We want God's reign here now. It's not fully realised but we've got to play our part. As we come into the kingdom now. As we accept his reign in our lives, we should be seeing the kingdom advance. We should be bearing fruit for him. The church, some people describe the church as the kingdom of God. No, I, I would say that we, Christians, carry the kingdom of God. We are in the kingdom of God. We need to represent it. We're going to look at how we are ambassadors for the kingdom of God again, uh, in either next week or the week after. We carry the kingdom in us. We represent the kingdom. It would be remiss of me not to ask you if you have not been born again. If you would like to accept Jesus as your Lord and Saviour, if you would like to come into the Kingdom of God. To do that you need to place your faith in Jesus. Accept that you're a sinner, accept that you need a Saviour. If you would like to take this step to become a follower of Jesus, can I ask you to join with me in saying the following prayer? What I'll do is I'll, I'll start to pray, I'll pause, let you say it out loud where you are. Now this prayer, the words are important, but they're not the be all and end all. It's what you believe in your heart. 
And this is the start of a journey. This is a heart decision, not a head decision. But if you want to restore your relationship with God and you haven't done it before, or perhaps you need to recommit, then say this prayer with me. Dear God, I want to accept that I am a sinner, that I have done things that have damaged my relationship with you. And right now, I ask for your forgiveness. I am sorry. Help me to turn away from those things as I realise there is nothing I can do myself to restore this relationship. Thank you for sending your son Jesus to die for my sins. To pay the price on the cross. Death was defeated as he rose from the dead three days later. I accept Jesus as my Lord and Saviour and I receive the Holy Spirit. If you've prayed that prayer for the first time, if you've recommitted your life today, reach out to us. Send me a message through Facebook. Email me, adam at livingsprings.cc. Let's join with you in this journey. It's the start. If you enter the kingdom of God, let us help you to grow in the fruit of the Spirit. We want to be part of your journey. We're going to finish now with a worship song. Have a great rest of your week. God bless.